Hi everybody, Simon here. Solomon's Tales, episode 4. So, Solomon's in Soy 7, uh, Sukhumvit Road, Bangkok. He's just had some Thai food in a, like a food court. And he's venturing across the road. It's just after lunch, I think it was about, what, 2 o'clock? He's, um, 1, 2 o'clock. He's heading into the Soy 7 beer garden that used to be there. Um, on the front is like bushes, about five foot tall, and there's a bit of an arch, no doors, just walks in. Right in front of him is a huge long bar, goes quite a way back, with seats around the outside of it, and then lots of tables and seats all around the side um, in the bar. And at the back there's more tables and chairs. He notices the toilets at the back. There's quite a few people at the back and on the right hand side, but not many on the left. So he thinks, I've oh, got on the quieter side, he goes over to the left. Sits down against the wall, there's like a bench all the way along the one wall. Uh, sits down there, about halfway down, looking at the bar. Service girl comes over, drink, he's got a Heineken. Off she goes, comes back a minute later with a bottle of Heineken in one of those rubber condom things. Puts a beer mat on the table, puts his drink down, and throws another beer mat in front of him. Off she trots. Um, and you notice these beer mats are plastic unusual and they're like pink on one side blue on the other so lifts the one lifts his beer up has a swig of beer turns it so it's blue facing up he doesn't like pink and the other one flicks it over just subconsciously i suppose has a swig of his beer anyway a few minutes go and passed and the girls start circulating it's like uh, you know they're walking all the way around the bar to come past on purpose heading back to the table or to the toilet and a few nice girls walking past, but they sort of look at him and don't smile or anything, just keep walking. That's a bit strange, you know. He sort of checks himself out. That's weird. Then a lady boy comes up to him. He says, oh my God. <clears throat> I'm just not into lady boys. He's, he's like, sorry, sorry. And the lady boy sort of, huh? Gives him a funny look and he's, well, what are you looking at me like that for? Sort of. He said, what? <laughs> and she points at the the beer mat on the table and he's like shakes his head you know scratches his head what it's plastic and the lady boy picks it up and went blue boy lady boy pink girl or shampoo pink and puts it down with a pink face and up girl boy and he's like ah right he twigs it's some sort of signaling system Immediately he picks his beer up and swaps that one over as well to pink. Pink, facing up means girls, you're looking for a girl. Blue, you're looking for a lady boy. <laughs> he didn't know. <laughs> so the lady boy grunts and walks off. They always grunt. So then the girls are circulating. This time they're starting to smile at him and he thinks, ah, right, they're looking at the table. He didn't know. <laughs> no sign saying, you know, plastic beer mats, pink for girls. Anyway, so uh, girls are walking past, he doesn't spot anything special, you know, he wants a bit of afternoon aerobics, wants something special, different. Anyway, I'm going to go to the loo, have a look at the bottom, so off he walks, leaves his beer there, walks down, sort of goes around the long way around the tables, doesn't clock any girls that take his fancy, off to the lavatory. Comes back, as he's walking back, he's looking ahead and he can see at his table, there is a girl sat where he was sat or right next to his beer so he's approaching and as he's getting closer and they think wow she's stunning top heavy um very pretty girl but there's no other girls around just this one sat next to his table and he gets back and uh girl says hello great english he thinks, oh mm. and he starts chatting to her and she's lovely it's perfect and so they have a quick conversation she says, uh, short time, uh, 1,500 baht. And he's like, sounds fair enough to me. And he's like, yeah. And the girl says, um, where you stay? And he explains, okay. She says, he says, I'll buy you a drink. She says, no, 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 drink, we go. Oh, she's in a rush. Well, this could be good. <laughs> All right. So, psh, knocks his beer back. She grabs his arm and he thinks, oh, here we go. 
almost pulls him out of the bar. Right outside is some tuk-tuks. Um, straight into a tuk-tuk. Okay, 100 bar. It's only five minutes up the road, but it's quite a bit of a walk. Tuk-tuk, straight back to the Jasmine Suites. Soy 23, pulls in up the little driveway, out the gate of the tuk-tuk and pays 100 bar. Doorman homes the door and he signals to Solomon, reception, girl ID. And uh, so I'm like, oh yeah, okay. So, lift up to the fourth or whatever floor the reception is, to reception, tells the girl, ID card, security, whatever. And the girl pulls out card, gives, hands it over, and then back to the lift, up to his floor, into the room. Now, because she'd been pulling him so quick and really keen, he said, right, so he grabs it straight in the shower, aerobics, bedroom, aerobics. Yeah. Then there's a problem. Um, bit of a time gap. He wakes up in bed, a bit drowsy, Hell of a hangover. Um, had the jet lag kicked in and just knocked him out. Weird. But he was really drowsy and really bad headache. And he's, as he lifts himself up in bed, there's a guy sat in the corner on a chair, one of the staff from the hotel. And he's sort of rubbing his eyes, thinking, what, what, what's, what's happening, man? You know? <laughs> Look, where's the girl? Can't see her. And there's a guy sat in the corner at the bottom of the bed. He looks at the guy and the guy sort of, oh, 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 oh and off he scuttles. And he thinks, what? What's going on? And he thinks, there's something strange, you know, and he's, oh, his head. Anyway, he gets out of bed, he's got no clothes on, so he boxes her on the floor, boxes shorts, pulls them on, and he's really bad head. So he thinks, oh, I've got to take some pills. Where's this girl? Walks into the bathroom, she's not there, so he comes back out. His suitcase is on the side, and it's open. His clothes are all over the place. And anyway, he's got some paracetamols in there, so he find into the bathroom, a couple of paracetamols. And there's a knock on the door, and he's like, oh, what now? Who? What? And he goes and opens the door, and he's like, dazed. And there's a really well-dressed hotel guy there, assistant manager. And he says, may I come in? Perfect English. Okay, come on in. Closes the door, the guy comes in. Anyway, he's like, the guy's saying to him, how are you feeling, are you all right? And he's like, well, I don't know. What's happened? I don't understand. Um, and he's walking over to his case and he's, his tickets from his, just A4 bits of paper, the information of airline, are on the top and he pulls those. His clothes are everywhere and he throws the clothes back in the case and don't know why the bit of paper's out so he throws that in the case and the guy's you have girl in the room and he said I, I did but I don't know where she's gone and he said you you okay he said, I have, you said I've got a headache I'm a bit drowsy what's uh, what's the problem what's why were you guys here where's the girl gone he says she leave but she not come reception for ID card and he's waving her ID card and at this point he pushes it towards Solomon and Solomon looks at it and he's, his eyes are a bit blurry but yeah it looks like the girl yeah he gives it back and the man says uh, copy ID card copy and then starts apologizing about the ID card and the security and the receptionist and and Solomon's like, hang on a minute, what? The girl's gone, but I not pay her, and then he's thinking, oh, hang on a minute. So, safe, turns around, opens the safe. Yeah, everything's there. Goes across to his trousers, picks them up, and there was about 1,000, well, he took 2,000 baht out when he went out for lunch, so maybe 1,500 baht and it's gone. He's, oh, okay, she's took her money there and gone. Maybe I fell asleep. 
Um, and he still doesn't understand what's happening. He's still confused. And the man said, go, go, at security ring reception. And um, reception says she not come, she comes straight down the lift, not come to reception for card. So security come your room and we knock, knock and knock. We come in and you uh, sleep heavy, unconscious. What? And, okay, maybe, maybe I did pass out from the jet lag, but don't understand still. He said, you sleep, long time. It's totally, I haven't got a clue what this bloke's on about and why he's in the room. He, he just turns around, grabs his phone out of the safe, looks at his phone, it's about six o'clock and you think, well, it was lunchtime when I brought it back. What's he on about? He said, maybe sleep one hour? And no, 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 one day. Like, what? You sleep one day. Um, go, do drugs. Like, Whoa, what are you? He said, no, I don't do drugs. What are you? And he looks back at his phone and he looks at the date and the day and he's like, doesn't, doesn't register. Because, you know, you come there, land there, the day you start to blur. And he look, hey, he's lost a day. He has lost, he slept for a day, what's, and then it's starting to dawn, hang on a minute, and this guy starts apologising again about security and the hotel apartment building. This girl has drugged him somehow to send him to sleep, and uh, he's, he's sort of saying to the guy, hang on a minute, and he's trying to work it out, get his head straight. How could this girl have drugged him? She met her in the bar, they got straight up, came straight here. He remembers aerobics. And then it's like, oh, I left my drink on the table. I went to the lavatory, came back, she was there. She's put something in my drink. That's why she's rushed me to get me to the hotel in case it knocked me out in the tuk-tuk. It's starting to twig now. I've heard stories of this happening. I'm lucky for her, he's managed to get a vertical and a horizontal aerobic, so he's got his money's worth. So maybe that's why the clothes are out of the bag. She's found the paperwork, checking for numbers for the safe. Can't get in the safe and legged it. And he's like, okay. She's knocked me out with some sort of liquid drug. Um, I'd read about this, he'd heard about it other places in the world but didn't know about it in Thailand okay it's starting to it's still heads splitting he's okay so this girl has drugged me and then this assistant manager again keeps going on about apologizing so someone says why and the assistant manager he listens to him the assistant manager is ashamed they haven't called the police if the girl had gone for the ID card and rang up and found him unconscious. They'd have grabbed her, got the police, and all hell would have broke loose. Because she's legged it, this hotel, they don't want people to realise that their security is no good. They didn't spot the false card. The receptionist didn't spot the false ID card. It doesn't look good for the hotel apartments and then Solomon realizes ah your security not work you not see ID card and the assistant manager yes yes really really sorry and apologetic now he paid got a deal anyway I think it was 12,000 baht for three nights so the first night he's unconscious he's heading for the second night now the guy says, we give you your money back and you leave, please. And he's like, Solomon's like, no, my head hurting. I feel rough. I need food. I need some drink. Um, no, no. And then the assistant man, okay, we, we give you food tonight. Give you everything tonight. Have mini bar. We bring food for you. Tomorrow, give you money back. Please, you go and not talk what happened. 
Well, and then he sold them and said, well, I see how I feel in the morning, but yes, okay, food and drink, free, good. And money back in the... <laughs> hmm. So there we go, Solomon has been drugged. Next morning, in the night, he's, he's ordered food, loads of food on room service. He's emptied the fridge, he's having a bit of a drink, headaches go in, he's feeling better. Looks like it's no long-term effects. Next morning, he's feeling fine and he goes down reception there's an envelope there with his 12,000 baht in checks out and he's like i'm going to move to another hotel i've still got to do soy 7 1 eden club and oh, sorry guys 15 minutes again more well this just could be so many parts but it's an educational video let's look at it that way watch out for the girls don't leave your beer on the table. Mm. Solomon's educational tales. Nice ring to it. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Bye for now.